Bob Moog and Don Buchla had designed their first modules using tube technology instead of transistors? That's the type of question that Eric Barber of Metasomics likes to ask. And his answer are, by his own admission, purposely primitive circuits that resemble today's modern modules, but all using tubes. No transistors, no integrated circuits, certainly no CPUs. The most modern thing he might use in these is a Vactral. In this case, we're playing with the RK6. It's a resonant, two-pole, Salem key, low-pass filter that does have a unique sound. It also has a few quirks to it that I want to share with you to help you get up to speed more quickly with it. I'm going to stop my arpeggio. I'm going to switch over to the sawtooth waveform because it's easier to see the full range of harmonics using that. And what else are we going to do here? Let's go ahead and turn up the VCA so you can hear it drone away as we play along with it. I'll also pull the envelope generator and you'll see quirk number one. When I pull the tuning CVN, the cutoff jumps to a higher level. The CVN interacts with the knob control. Speaking of the knobs, they have an unusual range. The pointers don't rotate from 7 o'clock to 5 o'clock like you might expect. The pots have been mounted off to their sides here, so in the case of tune, it goes from 4 o'clock up to 2 o'clock, and the resonance and in levels operate the opposite way. Indeed, I'm going to turn resonance down by pulling it down to 10 o'clock. You'll see we have something that looks very close to the standard Sawtooth Waves harmonic series. Just a slight resonance hump there above 2K. Metasonics does say that the input level is a bit sensitive, that it's used to something below full Euro rack level, but in my case, if I want to turn it down, I'm not seeing like a lot of distortion added just because I'm turning up the input level. Maybe there's a slight difference and a slight resonant hump, and that's about it. So in my case, I tend to run it at full level, and it still is a little bit short of unity gain, as you can see over here on the scope. Also, at full tune, full cutoff, it is still filtering the signal a little bit, and that's a little bit of a roll-off we're seeing there above 2K. The knobs are very touchy. Most of the active range of the tune control is in about the top 20-25% of its range. But what that means is when you envelope it, it does cut the filter off very low. You can use it as sort of a low-pass gate, to be honest. Pull my tune up, start increasing resonance, and again resonance as well responds only to the top maybe 25% of its range, and Eric says this is normal. These are tube-based modules, and there is a lot of variation between tubes, so no two modules are going to sound exactly the same. Yours might act a little bit differently than mine. There's resonance, and we'll start to pull down the tune. And another characteristic of this module is that most of the resonance happens at higher frequencies. As I lower my tune, you'll see the amount of resonance dampens down quite a bit and it almost goes away. We do find a little bit of an interesting cutoff and then hump in the spectral diagram. Let's lower this a little bit more. Now we have a standard low-pass filter. And then this odd traveling hump in the harmonic spectra. Like I mentioned, these do indeed behave differently than your standard module. Now let's go ahead and put an envelope into it and start playing around with enveloping it. We'll pull the tune down a little bit, and I'm going to pull the resonance down for now. We'll play with resonance later on. Put in my envelope. Cuts the tune all the way down. And indeed, even though the manual says it may not mute completely, you might want to put a VCA after it. I have my VCA turned up. It does indeed mute the input pretty well, doesn't it? I can't really hear much bleed there. Now I have a standard attack decay sustain release, very fast attack and decay here. The RK6 does use Vactrals for the control voltage inputs, and that does mean there's going to be some slewing of the envelope. Not quite as sudden and sharp as, say, the Moog's own envelopes and its own transistor ladder. I'll switch over to the Sawtooth on the Moog for proper A-B comparison. Hear that sudden attack? And again, this is what the Metasonic sounds like. It's even hitting it with an 8 volt envelope level, and tune turned up pretty high. So even though it's not a real snappy envelope, I have found that this does work pretty well for simulating wind instruments that take a little bit of time for the energy to build up in their pipes. That little bit of rounded attack is not too bad, actually. It's 
sort of a muted brass sound there. Now let's drone it again and play around with this resonance. As I mentioned, the resonance kicks into the top part of the range. Resonance is the strongest at higher cutoff frequencies. A little longer release here. As I tune the cutoff down, you really hear the resonance go away. So this filter is going to have a different character depending on what note you're playing or what pitch range you're in and how you have tunes set up. Now having factorals on the input does limit how fast it can respond to the input, but you can still FM this a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and hold this for now. Take a sine wave out. My extra oscillator here. Tune it up an octave for starters. Bring it to the green input so you can see what it looks like in comparison. And bring that to the tuning CV input. A little bit of a beating there. When I go to higher octaves, you don't really hear the effect that deeply. But when I come to lower octaves, now you really hear the FM depth. And again, you can also envelope this or otherwise modulate the depth just to get a little bit more range of sounds out of it. Once again, behaving differently than a normal VR rack filter. Back to my CV in here. Actually, let's repatch my green cables here to play around with the resonance CV setting. You'll find that it has quite a narrow range of response. I'm going to show you how to work around that. As I increase it, there's nothing in the early voltages. I'll go ahead and pull off the normal resonance control here until I get to about 1.2 volts or so. It becomes a bit of a pulse shaper. And then the effect pretty much stops above 2 volts. I'll go to a higher pitch. That means if you were to patch something such as, say, an LFO into this, let's go ahead and get the Moog's Triangle LFO. Come up to here. It has what sounds like a sudden on-off effect. But this is where utility mixers come in handy. Go ahead and pull this out for now, take as the output. What I would do with the utility mixer is first change the bias to the point where the resonance first comes in, right around there. This would be your lower threshold for a unipolar modulation, like an envelope. But just for fun, let's stick with our bipolar modulation, the LFO, off a triangle pull that into the attenuator section, and turn up the attenuator just to the point where the LFO is going full range on the resonance. It's a little too sudden there. Go for a faster effect here. There we go. That's a little bit more full range. It's only getting the top part of the LFO, so let's go ahead and bias a little bit higher. So with careful adjustment of a bias offset and an attenuator between your envelope generator or your LFO and the resonance CV input, then you can start to take advantage of that full range. But again, the resonance CV is different than the resonant knob on the front panel. So you can kind of combine the two if you want. But I'll pull that for now. Go ahead and turn down my VCA. Let it be controlled again by the ASR envelope out of the Moog. Change my tune a little bit here.
little resonance and look at that sweep on the screen. It's a little bit of a DC thump there in the low frequencies. And just for laughs, put it back over to the square wave. Full fat square. Again, you see asymmetric ringing. So if you're indeed looking for a different sound, you're kind of enamored with the ideas of tubes, and you either are attracted to or don't mind working around some of the primitive limitations of this circuit, well, the RK6 will indeed give you a unique filter experience.